Hello? Hi, guys. Can you guys hear me? Um, I know you guys are tired, so this won't take too long. Um, so I'm just going to be talking about authentication and authorization in Next.js. Um, my name is Prosper Otemuiwa. I love open source. And um, you can find me online at Unicode Developer, on Twitter, on GitHub, um, anywhere, basically. Um, also a Google Developer Expert. And I'm from Lagos, Nigeria. I actually live in Lagos. So let's get started. Um, just a little about me. I'm a developer advocate. Um, and I also organize communities in Nigeria and also in Africa. Um, I lead the Angular Nigeria group. I lead Laravel Nigeria. And then um, I also co-founded um, a community of developers called Follow Africa. And we are currently in about five countries, Nigeria, Kenya, Ghana, um, Rwanda, and then we expanded to Tanzania very soon. So about authentication and authorization, I mean, this is something a lot of us are very familiar with. So let's just take a trip down memory lane. Um, traditional authentication, how does it work? OK? We all know how these stuff work, right? Um, many of us have worked with WordPress here, you know, typical round trip um, application. So a user submits some credentials. The credentials are checked against the database. If the credentials are invalid, an error message is thrown back to the user. And um, for the valid credentials, you have a user submit some credentials. The credentials are checked against the database. If the credentials are valid, a session is created for the user on the server. Then the session can be stored in files. It can be stored in a cache store. It can also be stored in a database. What happens next? Now, a cookie with the session ID is sent back to the browser. And then subsequent HTTP requests to the server carries the cookie, and they are verified against session every time. That's something we are very familiar with. But then what happens? Um, you know, as we grow, everything is evolving, everything is changing. The way we build apps, you know, also is changing. We have um, um, our apps are getting larger, our apps are getting bigger. We need ways to scale. Okay. So what's the modern architecture now? Decouple everything, everything, just decouple it. Now we have clients, we have the server, right? Now we are trying to build microservices, different types of microservices. You have one for the authentication. You have one for um, um, crunching data. You have one for you know, doing something entirely different. And then you're trying to bring everything together. You're trying to authenticate and trying to make sure everything works um, very well. Then now you have people um, building single, single page applications every time with React, Angular, Ember. And then, like I said, people need to scale. So now you have the server and you have the clients. You need to secure the server. You need to be able to also secure the clients. So you need a form of stateless mechanism so that everything can work very well. You don't want um, someone be authenticated here, and then you try to, when the person tries to log in from another device or tries to log in from a different region, um, the person's um, credential is nowhere to be found. So we come to JSON Web Token. Um, many of us are familiar with it. Some of us just use it. We don't understand how this thing works. And that's fine, too. <laughs> All right. So. The process of JWT authentication, right? Um, a user submits some credentials. The credentials, again, are checked against the database. Now, if the credentials are valid, a token is created. The token is signed and also returned to the client in response. Now, the token is either saved in lo local storage or it's saved in a the cookie. Then subsequent HTTP request to the server carries the token as an authorization header. Many of us already do this in your, you know, your AngularJS apps or in your React app. Right? You already know the flow. Now, if the token is valid, the requested resource is returned. So when the token is sent to the server, to the API, it returns the requested resource if the token is valid. Else, a 401 is returned. Okay. Um, the server receives the token, decodes it, and verifies it against the secret on the server. All right. Now we we'll look at the um, JWT structure. We have the header, we have the payload, and we have the signature. And then, you know, it's very easy for us to verify um, what our JWTs look like on JWT.io. Let's continue. This is just a sample code I, go, um, I took from a React app. Uh, so you have an, a handle authentication method, and then you have the access token return from the server. So the user submits the credentials, it sends the um, credentials to the server, the server authenticates and returns an access token, and then you set the session. Now, you have the method for setting the session. You, you specify, you store the access token in, in local storage, and then you use that to always you know, keep the user logged in at different points in your, um, in your client. Um, OK, let's move on. So 
Now you moved on to next years, and then you discover that everything that you know about does not work. <laughs> yeah, because you have pages, right? You have maybe five pages. You have um, your slash home route, you have your about route, you have the dashboard route, and then everything is server rendered. So the code, this is authenticated method that you're always using in your videos does not work. What's going on here? And then it's like, nothing works. Because you cannot read from local storage again, right? Because your pages are rendered on the server. How do I get my token from local storage? OK. How do we approach us now in XJS? It's very simple. Cookies. I'm sure some of you had cookies this morning. But that's fine. Let's talk about the cookies we're going to use here. So we're going to go through the flow again, all right? Um, you see some people argue about um, JSON Web Tokens. You see some blog posts, JWT versus cookies, and sometimes I'm trying to understand. Well, no. You can actually store your JWT in, in a cookie. So why do we have JWT versus cookies? Because your JWT is, is a token, a JSON Web Token. You can actually store it in your cookie, or you can store it somewhere else. So we take the, this approach. You store your JWT in a cookie. The cookies are sent in your HTTP headers with both um, requests and responses. Then your cookies can be retrieved from the header via your request or headers, right? Then you validate the user against the decoded token, that's the token from the cookie on the server, and you grant access if the token is valid, else you redirect somewhere else. Now, let's take a look at um, a typical you know, login approach, a typical sign up approach, okay? A user submits an email to the form with a text box. Um, the server validates if the email exists in the DB. If the email does not exist, you create a new account for the user. As you're creating a new account, you're creating a token that you have to send back, right? Now, when you create this token, you send an email with the token to the user. So the user has to log in, maybe to his Gmail account or whatever uh, email server is using, click on the ver verification link, and then when it clicks on this link, it is sent back to the server, right? The server verifies if the token is correct, or the token has been um, intercepted and you know, replaced with another token. So when the server um, verifies this token, it sends, it generates another code. There is now, you know, sorry, the user submits an email, clicks login, it sends a post request to the server. When the token is generated, a security code also is generated together with a link and sent to the user's inbox. So the user clicks on the verify link in the inbox, the token is verified on the server, and it, then it sets a cookie. Now, Remember, we're not using local storage here, we're just using cookies. Now, when you set a cookie, the cookie is available on the server, and then you can also get the cookie on the client. So now you have a shared state, where you can, on the server, you can actually request for the token from the cookie, then you can also request the token on the client. So the cookie keeps you logged in, and once the cookie gets deleted, you automatically you know, get logged out. All right, so this is a typical example. Um, for the demo I had, this was the approach I took, okay? So you have two higher order um, components. You have the first one, which is the default page. See the way um, we are trying to get it from the get initial props. I mean, if you use Next.js very well, you know what the um, get initial props does for you. Now you see the get user from local cookie, get user from server cookie, right? Now it checks. If the page is rendered on the server, you get it from the server. If it's rendered on the client, you get, it from the, from the, um, you get the um, user from the local cookie. And then you have another HOC, which is called the secure page, okay? And then here, you see, where, you see how we are getting the, um, the it's authenticated um, um, variable from the props, and then it's rendering the page, or it's rendering a component that says not authorized. Now you're gonna see this in action. Um, so this is our signing page and our sign off. Um, I'm using Auth0, so I'm using the Auth0 lock here. So what I just did is I called the show method in the signing component, and then I passed it to the default page higher order component. Then for the sign off, all I did is, um, you know, you just unset the token, it deletes the token from the cookie, removes it, and then it logs the user out. And then this is the secret page, okay? The secret page is just a secret route. Um, if the user is not logged in, you cannot access that route. If the user is logged in, and it verifies that the token is valid from the cookie, it grants the user access to that route with all the details from the token. So, one of the examples here is the email, and then the user can you know, access that page and 
display something on the page. So this is the demo. Um, I just wanted to look at how it works. So the good thing about using a zero is um, yeah, it's very fast, it's very simple. Um, from the dashboard, you can just um, configure the kind of social provider you want, whether you want to use Google, LinkedIn, and whatever, and then you can use that like immediately. So you can see what happens. It logs the users, user in. Then we now have two browsers with the user logged in. So when the user logs off, it automatically logs the user on the other browser. And all this you know, is server rendered using Next.js. Um, so, if you want to know more about this, there are several resources I can recommend. Um, first, the source code of that demo is available on GitHub, and then um, someone um, provided a Firebase authentication example, which is very good also, you can check that out. And then, you might be wondering, how, um, how do I you know, set up the server and you know, set up my um, backend to be able to verify the token? Um, so, Arunoda, the creator of Linux.js, has a very good example. Um, uh, we we're talking about the Linux JS. Um, Raul was talking about the Linux JS at the keynote, but now if you look at these two links, you have Cosbook Server, Cosbook UI. He made it. I mean, he made it open source. I don't know whether he has you know, removed it right now, maybe the, today, but it was open source as at the time I made this presentation. <laughs> so you have the server implementation and you have the um, um, the client implementation. So you can check the server implementation, look at how he organized, you know, you know, the express route and everything, and then you can um, learn how to. Um, use your own custom server with Next.js and process it on the back end. And um, yeah, thank you very much. <laughs>